Good morning. My name is Dan Filler, and I am the dean of the Klein School of Law. The national anthem will be sung by Michelle Paznokas, a member of our alumni class of 2017. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets Please be seated. Thank you, Michelle. That was outstanding. It is my pleasure to introduce the president of Drexel University, John Fry. Thank you, Dean Filler, and good morning, everyone. First, congratulations to the graduates of the Thomas R. Klein School of Law on this momentous occasion. I know I speak for the faculty who have prepared you for the practice of law and for the clients and communities with whom you have worked en route to earning your degrees when I say the legal profession is very, very lucky to have you at its service. On this important day, I invite you to think about the family members, friends, and mentors who have mattered most in your lives. Think back on the ways their unwavering love and support inspired you to find your purpose, to grow, and to excel. If they are with us today, think of the joy that they are taking in your accomplishments. If they are far away or no longer with us, think how proud they would be to see how well you turned out. So let's take a brief pause for a moment of silent gratitude and reflection. Thank you. For all of us, a commencement ceremony is a joyful affirmation of hope, even in the face of adversity. But let's face it, it's getting harder to remain hopeful about the future of our democracy and planet when adversity seems to be gaining ground. It's harder still when longstanding support for American democracy's bedrock values of patriotism and community engagement are eroding, especially among young adults. Those were the unsettling findings of a recent Wall Street Journal University of Chicago survey, which surprisingly received limited media attention and commentary. So was I troubled to read that Americans are growing less patriotic and civic-minded? Yes, I was. Am I alarmed to see our country deeply divided as core pillars of our democracy, including free speech and the rule of law, are under siege? How can I not be? Still, I have a reason to remain confident in America's capacity for problem-solving community building, and civic renewal. And the reason? 
is right in front of me. As graduates of the Thomas R. Klein School of Law, you are well prepared to promote justice writ large. It's not that you have just excelled in every academic setting in which you participated. It's also how you discovered the benefits of listening deeply to your clients and your colleagues and your communities. It's how you collaborated with them. And it's how you empowered them with agency. Some of you work with immigrants at detention centers in El Paso. So many among you provided excellent and vital legal services through the law school's various clinics and co-ops and pro bono opportunities. You help clients from marginalized communities secure access to benefits and service, services to which they were entitled, including social security and supplemental security income. You offered pro bono tax advice or handled tangled title cases so West Philadelphia homeowners could gain legal title to their homes. You worked to secure appeals, pardons, and compassionate release for clients who could not afford to pay legal counsel and help them get their criminal records of former convicts expunged so they could find housing and employment. In all these undertakings, and so many others, you were building a precious resource with your clients, colleagues, and communities. In fact, something so precious that democracy and civil society cannot function properly without it. Trust. Trust makes negotiation and compromise possible. Trust enables partnerships to succeed and to flourish. Trust replenishes faith in our professions and institutions. And trust is not just crucial to the relationship between clients and legal professionals, or for that matter, to every relationship and partnership. It is absolutely essential to our civic health. As builders of trust and exemplars of integrity in the legal professions, you can play a powerful role in restoring your society's civic health and safeguarding its future. Fabiana Pierre-Louis, the Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of New Jersey and today's honored speaker, was asked how and when she first became interested in the law. She said, I first became interested in the law when I was a young girl. I really loved history, and the history of this country and the law go hand in hand. I concur with Justice Pierre Louis with this addendum. The future of democracy and the law go hand in hand. That means the future of our country is literally in all of your hands. In any role you serve, as officers of the court in private practices, as prosecutors or public defenders, as authors of legislation, as compliance professionals, as legal educators and scholars, and as jurists. At every moment, in any role you serve, you have the power to build trust, to advance the cause of justice, and to help our country regain its civic health for the betterment of society. Your accomplishments fill me with confidence that you are ready to take charge and that democracy's future is in the best of hands. I am tremendously proud of this class, which includes Klein Law's first graduating law school students to come through the Stephen and Sandra Scheller Diversity Pipeline Program. And I am proud to call all of you Drexel graduates. Congratulations. It is now my honor and privilege to introduce the chair of the Drexel University Board of Trustees, Richard Greenwald. Our trustees deserve special thanks from the students and faculty for their extraordinary support of the law school. Mr. Greenwald.
Thank you, Dean Filler, and uh, good morning to all. I certainly would like to echo the President's congratulations to our graduates and to everyone who has supported and encouraged you along the way. Since its founding 18 years ago, the Klein School of Law has established itself as a national leader among its peers in scholarship, innovative programming, national reputation, and outcomes. For the second year in a row, the Klein School was ranked by Above the Law as one of the nation's top 50 law schools. The Klein School is a tier one law school for data privacy, which puts us in the top 3% of the American Bar Association's accredited law schools in this growing field that is so critical in protecting national security and individual liberty. Our law students are per perennial winners in the national trial tournaments, with Fordham Law School ranking Klein Law number six in trial competition performance rankings. And we are in one of the top law schools in the greater Philadelphia area for employment outcomes, with 92.4% of last year's JD class securing gold standard jobs. You can see the results everywhere in these superlative rankings, in the success of our trial advocacy program, which is among the top five in the nation, in our moot court team, which is in the top 25, in the cutting edge scholarship of our faculty, and in the phenomenal performance of our students and graduates. All of this takes superb faculty and leadership. But it also takes students like you, who are determined, hardworking, resilient in the face of obstacles, dedicated to your fellow students and to the wider community. I commend you for all your achievements and for committing yourself so deeply to your profession. I wish to leave you with these words from U.S. Supreme Court Justice Katanja, Katanja Brown Jackson. Be open to new ideas and experiences because you'll never know when someone else will have an interesting thought or when a new door will open to take you on a journey of your dreams. Congratulations, graduates. Thank you, Mr. Greenwald. It is also my honor and privilege to introduce the chair of our law school board, Thomas R. Klein. In addition to being chair of the board, he is our number one cheerleader and loves his engagement with this community of students and the community of faculty. Our law school board deserves special recognition for their extraordinary support of the law school. Mr. Klein. Good morning. Members of the class of 2023, along with your parents, spouses, children, friends, our distinguished and extraordinary faculty, our exemplary Dean Dan Filler, our transformational university president, and my dear friend John Fry, and groundbreaking Madam Justice Pierre Louis. I am proud and deeply committed to our law school. We began this venture as a community in 2006. It was my honor that the law school was named the Thomas R. Klein School of Law in 2014. We now have hundreds of graduates contributing every day to the protection of rights and the development of the law. 
I personally work alongside many of them at the law firm of Klein and Spector. You members of the class of 2023 are part of a remarkable story and a remarkable tradition. You will join a growing legion of Drexel Klein School of Law lawyers who every day make a difference in the lives of the people who they serve. In my role as chair of the law school board, proud member of the board of trustees, and self-proclaimed number one cheerleader, I have observed from the beginning the dedication of our prestigious and productive faculty, as have you, members of the class of 2023, with heads shaking affirmatively, uh, providing programs that are unique, innovative, and academically superb. We are at Drexel Klein in the forefront of American legal education. We have been and we continue to be. Co-ops, pro bono, online learning, top of the country trial advocacy, to mention just a few. Our faculty is stellar, first and foremost in teaching, and our reputation has grown exponentially in scholarship and innovation. But we could not be who we are and who we are becoming without you, class of 2023. I know many of you personally. I've seen you in some classes, and I've gotten to meet and know you professionally and personally. And you are a remarkably gifted and talented class. In moments, just moments from now, on this stage, you will each be hooded. You will hold a Juris Doctorate degree in your hands. That diploma is not only a badge of accomplishment. A law degree is a badge of honor with special privileges, and with those special privileges, my friends, go special obligations. You will be entrusted with the property, the lives, and the liberty of those who you have already represented and will come to represent for decades to come. Let me assure you, as someone who celebrates his 45th year from receiving this same privilege, this is a humble undertaking. I leave you with this thought. My thought's going to go all the way back to Abraham Lincoln. In speaking of the lawyer as a peacemaker, Lincoln said, a lawyer has a superior opportunity of being a good person. I would suggest to you that it is because of this special knowledge and special skills and the obligation that is imposed upon us collectively. My hope is that you will use this diploma, your law degree, and your law license and your entree into the profession to make the world better, to make your fellow man more secure, and yes, to make yourself better as well. Congratulations, class of 2023. Wow. These days are always awesome to me, and I am, as always, incredibly excited to be here with all of you, with our graduates of the Master of Legal Studies program, with our graduates of the LLM, with our graduates of the Juris Doctor program, some of you who ran fast and some of you who ran faster, family and friends, members of the Drexel and Klein Law Communities. I am looking out today at all of you in this amazing and vast space. And I am looking out and I am imagining just a few hours ago. 
I'm imagining the alarm clocks, or more likely your phones, with the alarms going off at five or six or seven, cutting it close. Any, there probably were a couple of eight o'clockers here. I was up at three, I'll admit it. These days are big. It gets my, my body going early. But as I think about all of you getting up at these hours, I think about all of the individuals in this hall who woke up today with the intention of coming to this special, special occasion. Because this day, this day is not normal. People woke up today and skipped work. I know some of you did. I don't know whether you were sad or happy, but I know you skipped it. And some of you probably, some younger siblings, cousins, nieces, nephews, maybe some of you skipped school today. I know you were happy about that. And our graduates got up and they began to prepare themselves for the day. And each of you got into cars and trains and buses or came here on foot. Each of you came as individuals to come meet this special day, this remarkable day. And hopefully when you arrived and you saw this building, you thought, it is a big day. And this building reflects the enormity because graduates, this is truly an enormous day. It is exceptional. But you know, this building needed to be big. We didn't have a choice because we needed a space big enough to hold all the pride that is vibrating through this room. Pride from our community at the law school and the university and I will tell you, our faculty feel immense pride about how all of you have done, how all of you have made it here today. And I know there is incredible pride from the family and the friends, the partners who join here today. Immense pride of all of you. Not everyone is here today. Some people couldn't rearrange their schedules. Some people didn't have the ability to travel to Philadelphia, to this building. Some people did not join us all the way to this moment on the journey. Family, friends, even a colleague. This has been a big and complicated journey for all of you. I think about how this journey began years ago, before law school. I bet the families, the parents and grandparents, they remember all of you guys as you struggled through high school, through college. I wouldn't be surprised if there are a few first-generation college graduates amongst us, let alone first-generation gen law school or graduate school graduates. But it didn't matter whether your people had gone to law school because I can see from all of you that you were a support system. So of course you feel pride. Look at what these folks have done today. It's incredible. And all of you graduates, you need to feel that too because all of you have gone through a challenging curriculum with your courses, tough courses, teaching you complicated, new, unfamiliar ideas. This is a hard road. Think back to that first week you were in classes and you thought, I thought this was gonna be a lot easier. And it wasn't, it was hard. But COVID happened. So it took something hard and made it really hard, immensely hard. And for a few of you in this group, we got together in another big room as first years. And I got to teach you torts. And some of you don't know, I'd never taught it before. 
But we needed to offer small sections, 30 students in a classroom that held 200, because during COVID, things had to be different. We had to stretch, and you stretched. Maybe you stretched by sitting in that bedroom that no one ever used before. Maybe you stretched sitting in the kitchen with the dog, or your partner, or your mom wandering around the whole time. Maybe you went to the basement, you know, the basement where mostly there are boxes, furniture, spiders, and now you zooming, but all of you did it. So when I think about the pride in this room, why we all feel it and why you should feel it, the answer is you did it and you did it in grand style. You made it here today. And here's an amazing thing for a few of you, maybe many of you, who didn't get the undergraduate graduation, didn't get this moment where everyone in the family could share it. This may be your first graduation since high school. Well, let's own it. We need a building this big. We need a building this big. And we are immensely proud of what's to come. We are immensely proud. Those of you who are sitting for the bar are gonna work. And let me just say, for family members who have a graduate sitting from the bar, this is a moment I ask on their behalf for generosity. <laughs> they are about to enter one of the most difficult phases of their entire educational career. They are going to have to spend a couple of months learning a massive amount of information. And so when they say to you, I can't do that dinner, I can't do the Sunday brunch, Take the rain check graciously. We need you to give them the space to soar over the next couple of months. And every one of the students who is sitting from the bar, for the bar can pass the bar, because no one is here who can't do that. We're excited about that. Some of our students are taking the bar, some of our students are not. Every one of them is going to go on to a career where they fight for justice and trust and honesty the compliance work of our graduates makes all the difference in a hundred domains where no one is looking, where we make sure that our society stays intact. We're so proud of the service you're gonna provide, the support you'll provide for democracy. But in this building where the pride soars to the very high heights, something else is forming because what's happening today is all of you are formally joining, and all of the rest of you too, that community, that is the Drexel Klein Law community. You are joining a community of alumni, of faculty and staff who care deeply about you and want to stick by your side, not just now, but for the rest of your years in whatever it is you do. And it's amazing future you all have. And we feel huge pride in that. But more than anything, what I have to say is, we've never had a group of alumni, of graduates, who had to go through so much to get to the finish line. So when I think about this future, when I think about all that we're asking you to do, all we know you will do, I think with a great sense of confidence and relief that when we say our democracy and justice and communities lay on your shoulders, you have already proven you can hold the weight, you can support the responsibility. And I know I am not alone and everyone around you is so immensely proud when they go home and you go home thinking about the fact that you are the class of 2023 and we can count on you. Congratulations. You know, the heart and soul of Drexel University is its phenomenal faculty. And it is my pleasure to welcome this morning the chair of the Faculty Senate, Dr. Kevin Owens. Thomas R. Klein, School of Law, Class of 2023. Uh, as the Chair of the Faculty Senate, on behalf of the faculty, 
congratulations on your graduation. I wish you great luck and Godspeed in all that you do in the future. Go Legal Dragons. As I said, today's graduates are not, by any means, leaving the law school community. You're simply joining the 2,217 previous graduates as members of the alumni community. Emily Foote, a member of our alumni class of 2010, is here to welcome all of you and share some words of wisdom with the class of 2023. Good morning. As a proud alumni of Klein School of Law, I am honored to celebrate this momentous occasion with, with you. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to congratulate each of you on the hard work, dedication, and resilience that I know it took for you to be here today. So congratulations. For me, attending Klein School of Law was a transformative experience that shaped my career as a lawyer, an entrepreneur, and now an investor in countless ways. The engaging, collaborative professors that always had their door open to help. The rigorous coursework that was intentionally integrated with experiential learning. The entrepreneurial spirit of the institution. The school's deep and honest commitment to diversity and social justice. The supportive community that held everyone to the highest ethical and professional standards gave me not only competencies and values, but perhaps most importantly, confidence to pursue my passions. Graduating from Klein School of Law was the first time in my academic career that I left an institution feeling truly confident, and I'll be forever grateful for that gift. As you move forward, I encourage you to lean on the competencies, values, and confidence that Klein School of Law gave to you, and stay connected with this amazing community of scholars, advocates, and leaders. I promise that doing so will serve you well not only in your career, but also in life. Congratulations on this momentous milestone. I wish each of you all the best. Continuing a tradition our inaugural class created, our Student Bar Association wants to recognize some very special people. Diksha Walia, Peter Gaynor, Sandra Benjamin, and Border Sai are with us to present the SBA Awards. <laughs> Diksha. Good afternoon, or good morning, I guess I should say. I'm here to present the Dive In Champion of Diversity Award. This award is presented to an individual who demonstrates diversity, inclusion, and cultural competency in our law school and the legal community as a whole by promoting equal opportunity in race, religion, culture, sexual identification, and expression. And this award goes to Professor Wendy Green. Next up, Border Sai will present the Dive In Student Champion of Diversity Award. The Dive In Student Champion of Diversity Award is presented to a graduating student who most exemplifies diversity, inclusion, and cultural competency in the law school and the legal community. And with that, it is my great honor to present this award to this year's recipient, Sharifa Rowe.
now introducing Peter Gaynor, who will be presenting the Rosado Award. Good morning. The Dean Jennifer L. Rosado Excellence in the Classroom Award is presented to a faculty member who taught a first year course to the members of the graduating class and demonstrates excellence in teaching, strong relationships with students inside and outside the classroom, and a reputation for intellectual integrity. Please join me in congratulating Professor Veronica Finkelstein. Sandra Benjamin will give out the final SBA award. The final award is the Carl Toby Oxholm III Outstanding Contribution to the Thomas R. Klein School of Law Community Award. This award is presented to a member of our law school community who has exhibited a continued commitment to the betterment of the Thomas R. Klein School of Law. The recipient may be a faculty member, staff member, co-op sponsor, pro bono supervisor, or any other member of this great community. And it is my honor to present this award to Dean Danielle Bordley. Thanks to all of you at the SBA. Now I would like to invite Roger J. Dennis, Meredith Dean of the Klein School of Law, and Mary McGovern, a former Assistant Dean of Administration, to the podium to present their awards, the Roger J. Dennis Distinction in Teaching Award and the Mary K. McGovern Exceptional Contribution to the Student Experience Award. The uh, Dennis Distinction in Teaching Award is presented to a faculty member who taught upper level courses to members of this graduating class and demonstrates excellence in teaching, shows creativity in the classroom, interest in students, and the ability to teach complex and difficult information. And who more deserves the award than Professor Donald Tibbs? The Mary Kay McGovern Exceptional Contribution to the Student Experience Award is presented to a staff member at the law school who demonstrates a consistent and unwavering commitment to ensuring that students have a fulfilling and rewarding experience at the Thomas R. Klein School of Law. It's my privilege to present this award to Nick Shalofsky. At this time, I am pleased to introduce our commencement speaker. If there were an all-time selection of 
40 under 40 makers of history in the law, today's speaker surely would have made the list. Consider everything Justice Fabiana Pierre-Louis had accomplished before she reached her 40th birthday. The daughter of immigrants from Haiti who grew up in Irvington, New Jersey, Justice Pierre-Louis worked as an associate in private practice for her first three years out of law school after clerking on the New Jersey Supreme Court for Justice Wallace. She then embarked on a distinguished career as a federal prosecutor in New Jersey, serving as the U.S. Attorney's, in the US Attorney's District offices in Newark, Trenton, and Camden. And in 2016, she became the attorney in, ch in charge of the Trenton office, the first woman of color ever to hold that position. In 2018, she became attorney in charge of the Camden office, again, the first woman of color to hold that position. And while supervising the attorneys in these offices in Trenton, and Camden, Justice Pierre Louis investigated and prosecuted her own cases covering all variety of crimes. She also played a key role in establishing the Trenton Reentry Court, which helped recently released federal offenders successfully reenter society. She returned to practice in 2019, making partner at the firm of Montgomery McCracken. But history and service came calling again in 2020. Because that's when New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy nominated Justice Pierre-Louis to become the first black woman to serve on the New Jersey State Supreme Court. In his announcement, Governor Murphy called his nominee a superstar, described by her peers as a unique blend of intellect and humility, and one of her former Rutgers Law School professors called her a shining example for our students, alumni, and aspiring law students. She's brilliant, humble, kind, and committing to pursuing all her endeavors with a spirit of excellence. And I truly, truly am honored to introduce today the Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the State of New Jersey, the Honorable Famiana Pierre-Louis. Good morning. Oh, it looks like a lot more people in here. Let's try that again. I said good morning. good morning. All right. Thank you, Dean Filler, for that wonderful introduction. Thank you for inviting me to speak here today on this most joyous occasion. Welcome to family, friends, faculty, the Board of Trustees, the Law School Advisory Board, and of course, the graduates of 2023. It is truly an honor to be here today. Several years ago, I had the pleasure of serving as a guest lecturer on a couple of occasions uh, in my very good friend Lloyd Freeman's Klein School of Law class on electronic discovery and digital evidence. Mr. Freeman graciously asked me to be a guest speaker to discuss criminal discovery as I was an assistant United States attorney at the time prosecuting federal crime. I have very fond memories of my time during my guest lectures. The students were always engaged and curious, and best of all, no one ever, ever fell asleep as I went on and on about the importance of turning over exculpatory evidence. So I was extremely honored to be asked to speak here today at this fine law school's commencement. This is such a special day for all of you and for all of your families, just as my law school graduation was special for me. Growing up, I did not know any lawyers, so I had no connections in this profession. I was the first person in my family to go to law school, and I was only the second person in my family to graduate from college after my sister completed that feat just two years before I did. As Dean Filler mentioned, I am also the child of Haitian immigrants who came to the United States in search of a better life. My father was a New York City cab driver, and my mother worked at St. Vincent's Hospital in Manhattan, first in the kitchen and then in transporting patients all over the hospital. English was not my first language, and I spent the early part of my childhood in a two-bedroom apartment in Brooklyn with seven of us at least. When I graduated law school, that was my background. 
I did not have the pedigree in this profession, and I quite frankly had no idea what I was doing and where my path would lead. But somehow, despite that background, that was not necessarily indicative of someone who would eventually become a judge. I stand here today as the first black woman and the first woman of color at all to sit on the highest court in the state of New Jersey. <laughs> Adversity can bring out the best in people because it creates within us the confidence to overcome and achieve great things. I did not know this at the time, as I struggled to forge a path for myself in this profession, but my somewhat unconventional background for the legal world made me who I am today with my own unique perspective and on the world and in the law. The class of 2023, you have certainly seen your share of adversity these past few years. Please know that you are primed to achieve any goal you set for yourself given everything that you have overcome. The past few years have obviously been unprecedented. And although May 2023 looks very different from May of 2020, and we are all gathered here together, celebrating in a way that was not possible just three years ago, it is not lost on me or anyone in this room that the pandemic certainly had a profound impact on your time at this law school and your time obtaining your degrees. If this were any other time, I would stand here and say that I know exactly what you went through, that I sat in those very seats, and I know exactly what you're thinking as you embark on your career in the law. But I absolutely cannot stand here and say that, and pretend that I knew exactly what you went through during your time at this law school. Because I, and every graduate pr prior to 2020, cannot say that we shared the same exact experience or walked in your shoes, because I will never know what it was like to start my time in law school taking classes virtually during a once-in-a-lifetime global pandemic. I was, will never know what it was like not to be in the same room as my classmates, to have virtual classes, or when you did have in-person classes, to have everyone wearing masks and sometimes probably not even know what your classmates look like. I also don't know what it's like to have professors and not be sure if they're frowning at me or smiling at me when I answer their questions in class. Starting law school is such an exciting and daunting experience and you all did that during a time when the world was literally turned upside down. And given the magnitude of people impacted by the pandemic, I am sure at least some of you were personally impacted by its devastating effects. Some of you started your programs in the midst of the pandemic. Some of you started your programs when things were starting to look up and there was a light at the end of the tunnel. And some of you, as Dean Filler mentioned in his remarks, the pandemic started during your final year in college and you never got the chance to celebrate the joys of completing your undergraduate studies and walking across that stage to receive your diploma and celebrating with your families at that graduation ceremony. Thankfully, you all get to do that today. For all you have overcome and endured over the past few years and more, I salute all of you on your resilience, your patience, and your perseverance to move forward on your goal of graduating law school or obtaining your LLM or obtaining your Master of Legal Studies in the midst of so much uncertainty. There will certainly be difficult times to come in the future, but please find empowerment in knowing that you survived law school, which is no easy fit, feat when you're not dealing with a global pandemic, but you succeeded during a time that was exceptionally difficult in the history of this world. That does not happen unless you have the dedication to bring about that success to fruition, particularly in challenging times. So for reaching this moment, for continuing to remain committed to excellence during such a difficult time, please know that you have left this law school and started your journey in the legal profession phenomenally capable and well-equipped to rise to any challenge that comes your way, wherever your journey may take you.
And for that, I know that your families are proud of you. I know the entire Klein School of Law community is proud of you. And you should be extremely proud of yourselves and empowered by the fact that you overcame significant adversity to be where you are today. So as you start your careers, I'm going to ask just a few things of you. First, I ask that you embrace the fact that you will be the new leaders of the bar. You may not realize that now, but you all stand at the forefront of a changing legal profession. We are embarking on a new form of practicing in our legal profession, and you will be an integral part of determining the direction in which the profession goes. You are the first generation of attorneys that have begun your careers, starting with your time in law school, practicing in a virtual world, and participating in virtual court proceedings that just short, a few short years ago, no one would have thought possible. You are the first generation in which we all realize that an entire workforce can actually work from home and get the work done. And no one would sit on and watch TV all day. So your generation will undoubtedly play a role in formulating what will hopefully be an attainable work-life balance, given the role that technology now plays in all aspects of the law. You will be the new leaders of the bar that have an important hand in deciding the future of this profession in determining what this profession will look like in years to come, and fashioning this new way of practicing that is unavoidably upon us. You are also entering the profession at a time where our nation is once again grappling with issues of racial and social justice that, although ever present, came to the forefront in the past few years. There is no denying that members of the legal community have taken the lead, in re taking the lead regarding social justice throughout history and that is no different in this moment. In New Jersey, our judiciary has renewed its commitment to eradicating systemic barriers to justice and equality for many citizens of the state. Part of that commitment necessarily involved confronting the fact and the reality that change is needed. That includes having frank discussions about discrimination and how systemic racism often contributes to disparate court experiences for people of color. As part of that effort, the judiciary outlined an action plan for ensuring equal justice that identifies numerous support to greater access, fairness, and equality for all who seek justice through the courts, especially those members of unrepresented, underrepresented communities. These are just some of the tough issues we are grappling with right now in the legal world and beyond. So again, you are starting your careers at a time of extraordinary change. Don't let that worry you. Have faith in yourself and in your abilities to make an impact on the law. And embrace the fact that you are the future of this wonderful profession of ours. And do not be afraid to use your voice. The legal profession is ever-changing and always evolving. But that evolution only happens when people and voices from different backgrounds and different experiences are willing to speak up and add their perspective to the conversation. Next, as you go forth in your careers, please take advantage of all the opportunities that will come your way. Trust me, there will be many, many opportunities, but along with all those opportunities, there will be a dozen reasons not to do something and not to take on a new challenge. But you really have to seize those challenges. I would be lying if I said that there weren't times in my career that I was hesitant to take on a new challenge, a new position, try something new, or even walk down a path that someone who looks like me has never walked before. As noted in um, Dean Filler's remarks, I spent almost a decade at the United States Attorney's Office as a federal prosecutor. I started in the Newark office in North Jersey in 2010, and in 2012 I moved to the Trenton office in the state's capital. In 2016, I was unexpectedly asked to be the attorney in charge of the Trenton office. My first reaction was, I absolutely could not do it. At the time, I had a three-year-old and a one-year-old, and I had just come back from maternity leave about three months prior to that point. So my knee-jerk reaction was, I cannot do this, and I was primed to decline that offer. When I talked to my husband, the wise man that he is, he told me that I was crazy to think that I could not do it and that I should do it 
And there was a reason that I, who was not the most senior attorney in the office at the time, was asked to take on that role. And as I thought about it more, I remembered that in the 200 plus year history of that office, there had only ever been one woman in charge of the Trenton office, and never a woman of color. And I remember thinking, if I didn't do it, I quite frankly didn't know when that opportunity would present itself for another woman, let alone a woman of color. In the words of the late Georgia Congressman John Lewis, who spoke at my law school graduation, if not us, then who? If not now, then when? I couldn't wait for someone else or some other time. I had the opportunity and it was presented to me. So I had to take those words to heart and seize the moment to take on a role that no one that looks like me had ever held and have the chance to make an impact. So I seized that opportunity, which eventually led to more groundbreaking opportunities. It's not always easy to forge your own path or step out on faith to try something new. We're all human. It's okay to be nervous. It's okay to be unsure. But in all things, have faith in yourself. Believe in yourself and in your abilities. Trust in the education that you have received from this phenomenal law school, from this phenomenal faculty, and the foundation that the Klein School of Law has laid to enable you to travel a road to success. Lastly, as you start your careers, I ask that you please remember to be respectful and courteous towards others, no matter what heights you reach in this profession. I think that's a simple ask. A couple of years ago, I was asked for an article what advice I would give to someone looking to make an impact in the legal profession, and my response was simple. Be courteous and respectful of others, even those you might view as your adversaries. It is unlikely that you will find yourself in a position to make a positive impact in this profession or in any area of life if you treat people poorly. Law school and the legal profession has somewhat of a re reputation for being an extremely competitive and non-collegial environment. But from what I hear and what I've witnessed personally, that is the opposite of the experience that you had here at the Klein School of Law. And thankfully, that is the opposite of what I experienced when I was in law school. In addition to the black letter law that I learned, I also learned to always treat others with respect, be a good colleague, to be ethical in everything that I do, and to be someone who should always strive to do what is right and just in this profession. I think those lessons, above all, are what have led me to where I am today. The people that have made the biggest impact in my career are highly regarded as leaders of the bar, but above all, they are great people and treat others, whether those others are judges or janitors, with respect and kindness. So please continue to strive to do the same. So those are my requests of you, class of 2023. I don't think I'm asking much, but simply asking that you realize and take ownership of your important role in this profession, that you continue to make the Klein School of Law community proud by stepping up to those wonderful opportunities that will surely come your way, and showing everyone that the attorneys from this great law school are not only skilled advocates, but also pretty nice people too. I truly look forward to learning and reading about all the wonderful things that all of you will achieve for many, many years to come. Congratulations, graduates. Thank you, Justice Pierre-Louis, for those <clears throat> thoughtful and inspiring remarks. It is a tradition of legal education, one that we have embraced, that the last speaker be a graduating student. Our students selected Larf McAllister through a competition, a competition judged by the students themselves. So with that buildup, I present to you Larf McAllister. Thank you to the Drexel Klein School of Law class of 2023 for allowing me to be your commencement speaker today. 
I am honored to deliver the commencement address to this incredibly resilient class. And thank you to the deans, professors, and administrative staff for your support. And thank you to everyone in the audience for your selflessness and encouragement. Graduates, we made it. <laughs> We've been dreaming of this day forever. For some, forever means from the time we were children. For others, forever means after courageously beginning a second career. Regardless of our motivations, we all experienced an untraditional start to law school. Either your first year began in an auditorium, masked and sitting six feet apart, or on Zoom after finding the best lighting, after making sure your, pe your pets didn't make any embarrassing or cute appearances. <laughs> Still, we had the same dream of graduating. Admittedly, we may have second gr guests graduating after being cold called, regardless of how well we hid behind the person in front of us or how fast we turned off our cameras. <laughs> Nevertheless, we made it here today. This class dealt with the unique academic struggles of law school and a particular set of circumstances. No single narrative effectively describes attending law school during a pandemic as depictions of injustices spanned across our screens. And yet, we witnessed the resiliency of this class and Philadelphia throughout it all. Though law school is marketed as an individual experience, this class understood the importance of thinking beyond the self and considering the success of the whole. It took all of us to complete the daily check-ins on the Dexel Health app. It took all of us to create the weekly walking groups to the health center while mentally preparing for the very invasive COVID test. And we all appreciated the frontline workers at Drexel and throughout Philadelphia. We all brought parts of our communities with us when we began law school. Some students started with a community of family members who consistently uplifted them. Other communities began with mentors and friends who knew their power even before they did. My community started with my single mother who initially sighed when I told her I was considering taking out more loans for law school, but in her next breath, she said, finally. Over time, we created a larger law school community. We all acknowledged the importance of support systems and inclusivity by reaching out to each other on GroupMe, which eventually became group chats, and by mustering up the courage to create study groups with the people around us. Some graduates formed a friend group by participating in traditional law school experiences, like moot court, trial team, the alternative dispute resolution team, and law review. But initially, we had to be creative and form bonds in awkward breakout groups and through Zoom private or not so private messages. <laughs> Additionally, I may have contributed to your communities at the Barbary table when you listened to my pitch on the best bar prep. Impressively, despite everything, we recognized that surviving law school required finding and appreciating people that cheered for us as we cheered for them. Through it all, we never let setbacks become our mindset. Though sometimes this was an isolating experience, we felt compelled to reach out to one another, making us better communicators. And while remote learning forced us to find resourceful ways of connecting with professors and potential employers, it made us better advocators. Finally, although everyone's community may look different and serve different purposes, each helped to accommodate the load we carried as law students and will carry as lawyers. Today, we leave with a greater ability to directly affect social change, so we must continue holding each other accountable. Caring for each other cultivated communities and allowed us to experience the impact of a shared understanding. So I encourage you to continue centering relationship, including nurturing the relationship with yourself. Interconnectedness creates communities we want to see. Communities where people who are incarcerated also get the right to redemption. And communities where people who 
um, where equity is more than a buzzword, but motivates change through action. Today, we dedicate our lives to others, which in, in turn serves the broader community. As Bell Hook said, rarely, if ever, are any of us healed in isolation. Healing is an act of communion. So thank you to the communities that helped us get here today and to the class of 2023 for committing yourself to this great calling. Togetherness allows each of us to rely on one another at our best, at our weakest, and at our highest potential. So please never forget that you have a community with me and the class of 2023. About eight weeks ago, our community lost a valued member of this graduating class, Andrew Portner. Today, in recognition of his substantial completion of the requirements of the Juris Doctor, we confer the degree upon him. At this time, I would like to invite Andrew's mother, Julie von Spreckelsen, to the stage. Losing one of our students is among the most difficult moments we face here as a community at Drexel University. And while I recognize that this degree will never heal the pain from Andrew's passing, it does justly honor Andrew's hard work and many contributions to the Thomas R. Klein School of Law. So pursuant to the policies of Drexel University and in recognition of Andrew's exceptional work as a student in the Juris Doctor program, I hereby confer upon Andrew the degree of Juris Doctor and ask you to accept this on his behalf and in his, and in his memory. Julie, you're a profile in courage. Thank you for being with us today and all of Andrew's family who are with us. Thank you so much. So um, let's try to shift gears now. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Legal Studies please rise? Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Law, please rise. And will the candidates for the degree of Juris Doctor, please rise. Candidates, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Drexel University under the charter issued by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and upon the recommendation of your faculty, I confer upon you the degrees indicated with all the dignities, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. In token thereof, I will present each of you with your diploma from Drexel University. Congratulations.
Graduates, the marshals will now direct you to the stage to be recognized individually. Joseph Zakreski. <laughs> Caitlin Emma Cantley Peckham. <laughs> Hannah Nicole Witkowski. <laughs> Leah Renee Ford. <laughs> Sharon Marie Reddle. <laughs> Marissa Abraham. Carly Doyle, Rosalie Ray Gentry, Elizabeth Madurki, Alea Dominique Cooper Grant, Kate Donia, Monique I. Kennedy. Valerie Chin, Shannon Maria Gales, Michael David Kessler, Mark Rivera, Larry Bartkus, Mavis Abozo, Jacob H. Tamara, Mariah Adkisson, Nora Rossini, Alexis Nicole Dean, Veronica Hammond, Keisha Lauren Vaness, Jessica, Jessica Wineski Hagen. To Leah Vanderhorst, Amanda L. DiCaprio, Christian Kojo Catalici, Susan Kerr, Felipe. F. Reyes, Catherine E. Bell, Jacqueline Parks, Vini Samhadri. Sarah Angela Thompson, cum laude. Chelsea Renee Jackson, cum laude. Colin DeChardin McKay. Nyla Dia Helene Murray. The Philadelphia Trial Lawyers Association, James J. Mandarino Award for Trial Advocacy. Lark Alexander McAllister, the Faculty Award for Outstanding Leadership in the Law School Community. Sharifa Rowe, the Dive-In Champion of Diversity Award. Malaya T. Johnson. Ella M. Perry. Rachel Beth Sandro. AJ Willis. Yeah. 
Alexander Paul Maddams. Brian T. Edmondson, magna cum laude, the Mindy Friedman Memorial Contract Drafting Award. Edward Jacob Gruber. Kate Marie Hurley, the Award for Outstanding Achievement in Workers' Compensation Law. Cody Thomas Smith. Dylan Patrick Mason, cum laude, the Faculty Award for Outstanding Achievement in Legal Ethics. Dylan DeGuglielmo. Darren Zhang. Benjamin Lewis Schmerler. Andrew Hutchinson. Kyle Reese Levin. Ryan Michael Kelleher. Dylan Jefferson North. John Lawrence Malloy. <laughs> Philip B. Rayton, cum laude, the Klein School of Law Moot Court Award for Excellence in an External Moot Court Competition. Noah Vincent D. Simone, cum laude, the Faculty Award for Outstanding Achievements in Experiential Education. Annette Marie DeCipio. <laughs> Melissa Susan Kalowski, cum laude, the Cozen O'Connor Award for Exemplary Moot Court Performance. Sishi <laughs> Chang. <laughs> Catherine Michelle Hood. Trevor M. Brown. Dracia S. Kelly, the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers Eric D. Turner Award. Erica L. Witter. Ashley Kiera Malone. Naya Sade Morgan Dantzler, summa cum laude, the National Association of Women Lawyers Outstanding Law Student Award and the Dean's Award for Exceptional Achievement in Law School. Jessica Liseth Arana. Mary Ann Batiz, the Faculty Award for Outstanding Pro Bono Student. Delisa M. Martinez, the Faculty Award for Outstanding Achievement in Legal Ethics. Andrea Burkell. My apologies. Audia Lynn Burkell. <laughs> Lindsay M. Geller the Emily G. Welsh Award for Excellence in Legal Scholarship. Nermeen Piryokoas, cum laude. Catherine Elizabeth Lynch. Kate Marie Stone. Emily Lucia Paladinetti. Saba Ubasi, cum laude, the Faculty Award for Contributions to the Intellectual Life of the Law School. Sophia R. Gardell, magna cum laude. Jacob Lincoln Yeager. Troger Adamkovic. Benjamin Peter Reichner, 
the Clinical Legal Education Association Outstanding Clinic Team Award. Cody Riley. Samantha Lauren Blank. Mariah Paratore. Andrea Philbick, magna cum laude, the first Trust Bank Award in Transactional Lawyering. Abigail Lee Chinnick. Rachel Elizabeth Sokolsky. Allison M. Long. Pranav Nayak. Zachary C. Gold. Beatrice Mary Schaefer, the Klein School of Law Trial Team Award for Excellence in Advocacy. Casey Miller, summa cum laude, Outstanding Achievement in the Criminal Law Concentration. Alexandra Ree Traeger, Emily C. Krotman. Christopher J. Smith. Daniel Thomas Phillips. Epidito Sean B. Morales. Renata Alexandra Bowdy. The Pennsylvania Bar Association Professor Luis Del Luca Memorial Award in Business Law. Jocelyn Marie Gula. Nicholas Mika Sinelli. Emily May White. Camille Francesca Howarth. <laughs> Kayla Alexis Rubin, summa cum laude. The Marshall Brendan Constitutional Literacy Project Outstanding Student Award. Abigail Suzanne Williams. <laughs> Lindsay Suzanne Romeo. Erica L. Silverman. <laughs> Hillary Nicole Pearsall, cum laude, the Emily G. Welsh Award for Excellence in Legal Scholarship. James Thomas Evans, cum laude, Outstanding Achievement in the Health Law Concentration. Nicholas R. Sabatine IV, magna cum laude, Grace M. Kent. Erica M. Rusin. Joanne Teresa Skinner, cum laude. The Faculty Award for Outstanding Achievements in Experiential Education. Andrew John Rigotti, cum laude. Brian Thomas Boyle. Alec Pereira. Liam Noel Gallagher. Alexander Mylan Brunel, magna cum laude. Anjali Joy Fernandez. Madeline Rose Lee. Lauren E. Apollonia. Noah Francis Rue. Alexis Elizabeth Young, cum laude. Oh 
Mia Mary Kashuba. Allison Nicole Wickman. Madison Carey Barnett, cum laude. Kelly Amico Carpenter. Megan Elizabeth Heidel, cum laude. Corey M. Mackinich. Akib Salam Khan. Alexandra A. Pugh. Karen Isabel Wiener. Courtney E. Jones. Samantha Nicole Keene. Jordan Allen Moore, cum laude. Taylor Marie Trusky. Emma L. O'Donnell, the public interest section of the Philadelphia Bar Association Outstanding Law Student Award. Namitha Matthew. Madison Jane Mueller, cum laude, the First Trust Bank Award in Business and Entrepreneurship. Sarah Ann Weibel. Rebecca Grace Davey. Audrey D. Burns. Ryan Anwar Quadas. Kaylee N. Petrosky. Emma Grace Sage McAvoy. <laughs> Catherine Elizabeth Cancellieri, cum laude. Caitlin A. Carmody. Natalie Mickey Nye, the Faculty Award for Outstanding Achievement in Legal Ethics. Sarah G. Militia, the Faculty Award for Outstanding Leadership in the Law School Community. Brandon Michael Esker. Sophia Argostini, cum laude the Faculty Award for Contributions to the Intellectual Life of the Law School. Lynn Lay. <laughs> Sukandeep Kaur, summa cum laude, the Dean's Award for Outstanding Performance as a Law Student. Kelly Ann Hanna, magna cum laude. Joseph Vincent Toll, cum laude. Robert Robinson Chance. Nicholas J. Renzi, cum laude. Andrew Maxwell Fine. Kyle P. Dutch the Award for Outstanding Achievement in Workers' Compensation Law. <laughs> Catherine Gemma Samara. <laughs> Elizabeth S. Iopes, magna cum laude, the Faculty Award for Outstanding Achievement in Legal Ethics. <laughs> Matthew Alexander Ramsey. <laughs> Julia Kathleen Boland, the Hector T. Lon Terrell and Sager Award in Trusts and Estates. Alexandra H. Kudatsky. Samuel Mann Mara. Martha Hostrup. 
Brandon W. Robilotti, Outstanding Achievement in the Intellectual Property Law Concentration. Theodore P. Holleran, the Faculty Award for Academic Success as a Law Student. Christopher O'Kane II, magna cum laude, the Clinical Legal Education Association Outstanding Externship Student Award. Jamil Alhendi, the Carolyn Ager Award for Excellence in Federal Taxation. Weishan Wang. Michelle Tan. Gia Marie Siketa. Mackenzie Page Lay, magna cum laude, the Heckscher, Tilon, Terrell, and Sager Award in Trusts and Estates. Jennifer Marie Delongis, cum laude, the Klein Inspector Award for Exceptional Advocacy. Ariel Taylor Silverman, cum laude, Outstanding Achievement in the Civil Litigation and Dispute Resolution Concentration. Michael Albert Vagnozzi. Erin Elizabeth Brill, cum laude, the Faculty Award for Outstanding Pro Bono Law Student. Madison Ann Morton, magna cum laude. Wow, what an amazing, amazing group. You don't have to get up, but once more, let's congratulate our newest law firm. We may, we may be a young school, but we certainly have our traditions. We close with a song written by the Nobel Laureate, Bob Dylan, which captures our hopes for all of our graduates today. And I invite Michelle Pasnoka's class of 2017 to the podium.
This concludes our ceremony, and we are so excited to welcome all of you to the Drexel University Thomas R. Klein community. You are part of us now, and congratulations to our graduates. Please rise and remain standing until the last member of the stage party and graduating class recesses from the hall. Thank you.